Hi, Vince here again with something just a little bit different today. And no, your eyes don't deceive you. I am on Windows, the reason for which will become apparent uh, very shortly. I wanted to discuss how to install a Linux distribution onto a USB drive using VirtualBox. I've found that doing it this way is just a little bit safer, especially if you're new at doing this. Otherwise, you might still run the risk of stuffing up your original operating system if you do if you do end up trying to do this on real hardware. It's also a little bit easier because you don't need to burn an ISO onto a USB drive first and then find another USB drive to do the installation on. Now, picture these scenarios. Say, for example, you are fairly new to Linux and you may have tried out some distributions in a virtual machine yourself and you perhaps want to now move on to trying it out onto real hardware. However, you may not be ready to completely get rid of your original operating system, whether it be Windows or Mac OS. A good way to do this would be to do an installation of Linux onto a USB thumb drive or USB spinning hard disk. Another scenario might be that you might be visiting a friend or a relative and maybe wanting to use a computer that uh, you don't own or perhaps it could be a computer at work although please note if you are going to attempt to use Linux at work please seek permission first. A good way to be able to do this would be to be able to carry your own fully installed Linux distribution on a USB drive. Now I am aware that there is something called a live USB with persistence. This is somewhat different to what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about fully installing a Linux distro onto a USB drive. Now there are a couple of pros and cons with these two methods and we can have a look at them. I've just jotted down a few of my thoughts. Firstly, if you're going to do a live USB with persistence, what you're doing is essentially is burning a ISO like you normally would to a USB, but depending on the tool that you're using, you are then creating a persistence file or a persistence volume where all your settings from that ISO or files from the ISO might be saved because otherwise each time you boot the ISO it gets reset to its original factory settings. Now to do this it kind of depends on the distro you're using and the actual USB image writer program that you're using. Some may work well some might not. The size of the persistent volume that you end up creating may be dependent on the tools that you use and in the past you may have only been limited to four gigabytes of storage space. There can be some bugginess depending on how it's implemented. Booting into a live USB instance with persistence can sometimes take a long time because an ISO is usually compressed and each time you boot you have to decompress those files first. It, however, might be easier to revert back to an original state if you stuff something up because it's usually simply a matter of deleting that persistence file. However, you might be unable to encrypt your saved data, which is kind of important if you're carrying a USB stick around that you may happen to just lose. Now, if you were to do a full installation to USB drive, it essentially is just like installing it to a hard disk drive or an SSD that's actually inside your machine. For this, you'll end up carrying, being able to carry around a fully working USB stick with all your saved settings, all your saved files, and it'll be just like running Linux on your computer. You will only be limited by the size of a USB stick in terms of how much, uh, how many things you can save. Uh, it should be actually comparatively faster to boot in this instance because you're not doing that decompression of ISO files. And what's really good is you can actually encrypt the USB drive. So in case you lose it, unless somebody knows your uh, decryption key, then it's going to be hard for them to access your data. So how do we go about doing this? In my case today, I'll be doing an installation of Ubuntu 
but I found that this method works in most of your distributions, including all of the Ubuntu flavors, as well as MX Linux, uh, Debian, Peppermint, and even Arch Linux. The first thing you need to do is go ahead and get VirtualBox. I'm showing you guys this in a Windows host, just in case anybody is fairly new at this and is still running Windows and would like to see how it's done this way. But of course, you can do a very similar thing in a Linux host as well. So you need to go and get the uh, VirtualBox application, download it there. What's also important is to make sure you get the VirtualBox extension pack. This allows you to be able to use USB 3 drives in your guest operating system because otherwise if you uh, use a slower speed it's just going to be too slow to boot off. Once you've downloaded those two files go ahead and install uh, the VirtualBox application. After you've done that find where you downloaded the extension pack as well and double click on that file and it should install it into VirtualBox automatically. Once you've done that you can go ahead and open the VirtualBox application. There it is. And next thing we can do is go ahead and create our virtual machine. So we click the new button here. Let's call this machine USB installation. We need to select the type of operating system. This will be Linux. And in this situation, I'm going to be installing Ubuntu. So we'll choose Ubuntu 64 bit. Let's bump up our memory to 4 gigs. Now an important step here, it's optional though, but it's it helps. Uh, you can actually just go ahead and select do not add a hard disk because the hard disk that you're going to be installing your Linux distribution into will be a USB drive. So you might need to create a virtual hard disk. And we can go create. After you've done this, there are still a few settings that you may need to adjust. So we'll click here on the settings button for this virtual machine. And we'll just check a few things here. System. We don't need a floppy drive. Uh, let's bump up the number of processors to two. Uh, we'll increase our display memory to the maximum 128 megabytes. Enable 3D acceleration. Change the graphics controller to VBOX SVGA. And also in the USB settings, let's change it also to USB 3. That should just about do it. Next, we'll need to go and locate where we downloaded our Ubuntu uh, ISO file. If you don't have one yet, you can go to the Ubuntu website and hit on a download link and select the version of the desktop that you'd like. So heading back over to VirtualBox. We'll click on this here and choose our disk image. And we'll scroll down to Ubuntu, wherever you saved your ISO file. 1910 is what I want. Open. And we can now go ahead and start the virtual machine. Now this should boot us up into our live ISO. Right, so I skipped over the uh, boot up process to make this a bit faster. Next thing we'll do is to click on Try Ubuntu. Okay, so once we've booted into the live desktop, we can now go ahead and plug in our USB drive, which I've already done. This next step is very, very important. You could be very careful. What I would suggest is you should probably unplug all of your other USB disks because uh, you've got to be so careful if you happen to accidentally select the incorrect USB drive you could end up being in a world of pain because if Linux installs onto that disk you have lost all your data. So next we go to devices, select USB and remember it's probably a good idea to 
unplug all your other USB drives uh, and then select the USB drive that you would like to install this distribution on. For me, I know what it is. Uh, your The name of your drive might be a bit different. It may say the manufacturer of your drive or something similar. For me, it's this USB 3 NVMe drive that I've got. And we'll just wait a minute. You'll see that the operating system has detected that you've inserted a drive. This is just like if you had inserted a drive into a machine running Ubuntu. So next we can go ahead and attempt to install Ubuntu. Click next for English. I'm in Australia, so I'll select Australia. That looks good. We'll do a normal installation. We'll install third party graphics and drivers. And we'll select yes if you get this message. Now I'm going to use the entire drive, but of course you can do a few other things uh, differently. You may want to create your own partitions. For the for a newish user, probably the best thing to do would just be to dedicate the entire disk to it. Once you get more advanced, you can do other things like try ZFS or create your own partitions. Now one thing you could try and do is, uh, I mentioned earlier, encrypting your drive. So we can go ahead and select this and it will automatically select using LVM. And we can simply click install now. So it's important when you encrypt a drive that you give it a security key and it's equally important that you remember this key. I'm just going to make mine very simple. And we can click install now. We can click continue once we see this. Select your region. And enter in your details. I uh, might want to change the name. Choose a password. Continue. And there we are. It's going through the installation. I'll pause the video here and we'll come back once the installation has finished. Right, so there we are. That took about 15 minutes or so for me but your time might vary depending on the speed of your USB drive or internet connection. You'll see this message once the installation is finished and you can go ahead now and shut down your virtual machine. Or continue testing if you feel that way inclined. We'll go and shut down. And there you have it. You have now created your own fully installed Linux distribution on a USB thumb drive. You can now use this drive in virtually any computer you like. Bear in mind though that what we have done here is created a drive in BIOS or legacy mode. If you're not sure uh, what that is, uh, you might want to do a little bit of reading and search around for it. What it means though is when you use it to put into a machine, you might need to make sure that you enable legacy mode in the machine and possibly also turn off secure boot. Furthermore, when you do try and boot it to a machine, what you'll need to do is you'll need to mash one of the function keys, and this will depend on the manufacturer of your machine, uh, to go into the boot menu of the machine to select that USB drive to boot into. If you're not sure what the boot menu key for your machine is, you might want to do a search on the internet for either the maker of the motherboard on your machine or the manufacturer of your laptop if you're using a laptop. Now, I'm also going to be making a follow-up video uh, where I'm going to show you how to 
boot back into this USB drive in VirtualBox. Keep an eye out for that one. Thanks for watching this time around. I hope you enjoyed what you've seen. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them down below. Bye for now.